Hello everyone and thank you for watching one of my videos. Uh, today I'd like to share a experience, uh, a story, and perhaps share some thoughts as well. This is going to be about a speed camera violation that I've received in New York City. And I've waited for a couple of months and no matter what I did, uh, I was found guilty. Uh, now, I'm not a lawyer or anything like that. I'm not really that good with the law, so I probably botched this whole thing myself, but, you know, I still thought I should make a video and give you guys some thoughts or something and maybe, you know, people would chill out and talk about it or something and maybe this will be useful for someone else somehow. So, uh, I'll try to make a table of contents in the video description so that you guys can find uh, which sections uh, are best uh, suited to your interests because I'll kind of try to do this video in sections and I hope you guys enjoy. So over here I have the photo or photos that was taken from the speed camera and over here you'll see that the certain elements of the data bar are highlighted. I've got the time in there which is exactly half a second. Um, they're accusing me of going 40 and a 25 and they're saying I'm in lane 1. Now, you'll notice that this isn't exactly from the NYPD or, or a summons or anything like that. This is a document from the New York City Department of Finance. So they're just basically like a little government company, if you can imagine. And they consider this a civil case, so crim not a criminal case, so the Constitution does not apply. So any argument you could say about um, you know, not being able to face your accuser, the camera, that goes out the window. Um, being innocent until proven guilty, that goes out the window. Any argument you say about um, not being the person driving the car and that they can't prove it and that you know you're innocent, that goes out the window because they have a law saying since the car is titled in your name, you're responsible uh, for everything that happens to the car, including the people you uh, give the car to and so on and so forth. So you know they don't give you any points on the license, but they want to take your money. So just to wrap it up. You cannot argue uh, that you didn't do the offense. Uh, you cannot argue that you don't get to face your accuser and you're not innocent until proven guilty. Basically, you're guilty until proven innocent, though I think you're guilty if they say you're guilty and you're innocent if they say you're innocent because they kind of have the power to do that and you don't. Then again, I'm not a lawyer, but these are the basic rules. Uh, if you say the Constitution, something about the Constitution, your rights and amendments and so on and so forth, and that this is criminal, uh, for them to take your money like this and you know you're innocent and you cannot be punished and so on and so forth they're gonna just you know they're just gonna say you're guilty they're not even gonna bother I was looking over this photo and I was quite surprised because I make it a point to not go too fast on the Eastern Parkway because I know for a fact that there are a lot of cameras there so I was like you know how can this be and then I looked at the lane numbering and just, something just seemed off with the photo, and I was convinced that, um, that I just wasn't guilty of the offense. Uh, there must have been a mistake. So that's generally what I wrote, uh, how I wrote back to them. I basically said, this must be a mistake. If you want to pause the video to read through the entire text in the photo and everything like that, you can do that. But I basically wrote, uh, this must be a mistake, the lane number doesn't add up, uh, I know for a fact that I don't go that fast and you know there's another car in close proximity and it just so happens to be where logically lane one would be and I know that these cameras either speed cameras in general either rely on like magnetic or electric wires in the ground or operate on like radars or laser or something but what I was getting at basically was saying that you know the camera must have um, not malfunctioned but it, like misfired in some sort of way because maybe it got confused because of the close proximity of the vehicles or something because this just doesn't make sense to me at all and you know I wrote them that so that was my defense and admittedly it wasn't a good defense but that's what I tried so a while later I get a reply in the mail from the city or the judge or whatever and they basically said uh, they don't find my evidence compelling or they don't have any reason to believe it or or me for that matter And yeah, sure. I mean this evidence isn't exactly hardcore mathematics and solid proof But I thought you know it would be kind of obvious that something was amiss here 
But then I remembered that they're out there to get your money, so of course they won't believe you. Of course they're more inclined to say that um, your evidence isn't compelling or any good, uh, or they don't fully believe you. So then I wrote them an appeal. I realized the biggest mistake that I made was saying that the camera malfunctioned. So instead I wrote them an appeal, and I told them that the ticket contains defects, that the data recorded by the camera does not match what is happening in the picture. Because this, the data bar on top of the photos tells you what the camera recorded, and this is what is used to prove who, what, where, why, so on and so forth, the offense was committed. If this data doesn't match up, then how can it be saying that you've committed this offense, other than, yeah, there's a photo of your car? So, I tried that, and then I also wrote that, you know, there's another vehicle in the frame, and it seems to be matching this pattern. And I was going along with that. And also, New York City has a policy that where something doesn't match up with a ticket, they they generally um, dismiss it. That was found on a website or anything. The entire the entire thing is over here in the picture if you really want to read through it. But I basically argued uh, the data is incorrect. There's another car in a frame, and and this doesn't prove that I've committed any offense. On the contrary, it disproves that I've committed an offense. Fast forward a couple months and woo, I finally get a reply. And it says, we received the record before us on appeal and the decision below, we do not find to be arbitrary, capricious, or unreasonable. So I was just like, okay, so they got my appeal and the only thing they felt they should address was that the original decision was, uh, if the, the original decision was capricious or unreasonable. So, I don't know, that's going to be $50, and I'm not going to go take it to the Supreme Court over $50, because that's just going to waste more of my time and money. I have a nice souvenir at least, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, okay, they, they accuse me of being guilty, and I feel like it's huge bullshit, and they didn't even consider the facts really, but what am I going to do, right? So... You know, I was going over this and I was like, hey, what the hell? But then I started texting my friends and I was saying, look at this picture, like, am I insane or something? Like, what am I going wrong? And one of my friends says, you know, what you could have tried was you could have um, taken the time between the photos and distance your vehicle went and calculate the speed for yourself. Another friend uh, told me he tried that once and it didn't work, but let's, just out of curiosity, let's just see how the maths play out, right? So what I've done was, I took this photo, and I took this photo. And then I overlapped them together on Photoshop. And what you, what you see here is basically, um, you know that the photo has been taken within a half second time frame. And you see my car moving from point A to point B. Now, the length of the car is a given. The length of the car does not change and it is easily available on the internet or you could measure it out yourself. So you have the length of the car, you see how it moves, and you have the time taken in the photo. Now the length of my car happens to be about 196.8 inches I believe. So that's gonna be 16.4 feet and you can see it moved I think it looks just a little bit more than one car length, maybe one car length plus one or two feet, right? Would you agree with that? Would that be reasonable? That's what it looks like. So I went and found an online calculator for speed and I crunched a few numbers. Uh, if I moved one car length in half a second, I'd be going 22.3 miles per hour. If I added an extra foot to that, it would be 23.7 miles per hour, an extra foot, 25.09 miles per hour and so on. Now the camera doesn't go off unless you go 10 over the limit, which is 35 in this case. But the camera is accusing me of going 40 miles per hour. To go 40 miles per hour in half a second, I need to travel a distance of 352 inches, or 29.33 feet. So let's just say 30 feet. It means I need to go two times my car length. So look at the front of my car in this picture, um, and and then the front of the car in front of that car. I know that's a funny way of saying it, but it looks like I moved one car length and maybe a foot or two, not two car lengths, or almost two car lengths or anything like that. So, you know, that's one way to prove that I wasn't speeding, as a matter of fact, but, 
you know, I didn't think of that earlier, and I wish I would have. But then, one, but then one, once again, my friend mentioned that doesn't work. But that's just another possible defense, along with the fact that the lane is labeled as 1, even though I think my car is in lane 2. And, you know, there's another car in frame, and so on. So, obviously, I'm short $50. Uh, was it a fair case? No, it wasn't. Um, I feel like I've gotten the $50 stolen from me, actually. Um, we have a lot of things going for me, I think, but I just didn't have the knowledge to apply that in a sense that would um, perhaps free me from this um, thing. But, you know, I hope that you watch this video and that perhaps you enjoyed or learned something or perhaps you have something to say or contribute um, so in other words I'm hopeful this video is um, helpful or something uh, side note how do I feel about this I feel like this is incredibly criminal for New York City to do they're basically stealing your money um, the cameras are inaccurate um, to me this is not proving that I've committed an offense it's just oh we have a picture of you pay fifty dollars and it seems there is no way to get out of it, really. If they have a picture, they have a picture. Um, I mean, I don't know how else you can argue that the camera, that, that, that you're not guilty of this, this offense, you know? Um, we've looked at my distance. It turns out it most likely didn't speed, you know? Or um, we looked at the lane. The lane's mismatched, and I don't know. I mean, what else can you argue? The constitutional stuff doesn't apply. I'm pretty certain once you get a ticket, you get a ticket. Side note, it would be helpful if they painted a scale onto the pavement so that you could prove or disprove whether or not you were guilty. These cameras are just inaccurate, and they are something that was false, I think. I feel cheated out of my money. Um, if you guys think differently, please let me know in the comments. And, you know, this is very stupid and criminal, and I hope that there's an end to it soon. That, so, that something happens to re remove these cameras, or perhaps make them more fair for motorists, uh, such as including a scale on the side, or making a sign for yourself, because... I'm just, I'm just mind-blown by how ignorant and, and dumb the whole process was, and how difficult it is, and how stubborn these people are. I just don't know. I'm not mad about it. I'm going to pay the fine. I, I think this is actually kind of funny. But it's better to have $50 than to not have $50. And I feel like this was the silliest way to lose $50. Especially since I am certain that I wasn't speeding. Because I never speed there. So I don't know. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know what you guys think. And thank you so much for watching. And have a good day.